Hi everybody. Today we're talking about hypothesis testing using critical regions. This is a somewhat old school way of doing a significance test, but the idea comes up a fair amount in the theory to come, so it's a good idea to get a, a little bit of an understanding of it now. So historically p-values were a little bit harder to compute than they are now. You had to rely on tables when you were doing normal calculations, t-calculations, and so on, and those tables would have finite numbers of entries and limited accuracy. So it was nice if you didn't have to do those calculations any more than necessary. The, um, the most common way of getting around that was using this idea of a critical region or rejection region. The idea is normally when we today do hypothesis testing we take sample data, compute a p-value, and then compare it to the cutoff value alpha, the level of significance of the test. The idea of a rejection region or critical region is to flip the process around. Start with that alpha. Start with that, that significance level. That alpha is going to de define a cutoff for your test statistic. Call it Z star or T star or whatever. And if you go out then and get sample data with a sample statistic more extreme than that, that's going to tell you to reject the null hypothesis. Let's see an example. Let's suppose that we have a two-sided alternative hypothesis and that we're doing um, a test with a normal distribution and a significance level of alpha equals 0.05. So alpha equals 0.05 corresponds to this picture. We have a shaded area of 0.05, which means each half is 0.025. Um, and so we can get that critical value of z star by doing an inverse normal calculation. In R, the command is QNorm, and we get, as you would expect, 1.960. So if you go out and you get a sample to test, um, to, use, to use in your significance test, and that sample comes back with a Z star greater than 1.960 in absolute value, that tells you that you are supposed to reject your null hypothesis. Example two. This time let's do a T distribution with 8 degrees of freedom and a one-sided alternative, a right-sided alternative. And let's work at alpha equals 0.01. So now we have this picture. Um, we have an area of 0.01 to the right of T star, which means we have an area of 0.99 to the left. So we do an inverse T CDF on that. In R, the command is QT, 0.99, comma 8, and we get T star is about 2.90. So again, if we go out and we get a sample and it has a T statistic greater than 2.90, so it falls in the shaded region, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Now, in the case of the normal distribution, for instance, we can take that critical Z value that we get and translate it into a statement about a critical sample mean, as in this example. Contents of cans of a certain brand of cola are normally distributed with standard deviation 0.2 ounces. Testing at alpha equals 0.05, we wish to use a sample of size 15 to test the null hypothesis that the mean contents of the cans of cola are 12 ounces against an alternative hypothesis that they're actually less than 12. So with the one-sided alternative and alpha equals 0.05, we get a critical Z value of negative 1.645. So if we get an X bar more than 1.645 standard deviations below the mean, we should reject the null hypothesis. So what is an X bar that is 1.645 standard deviations below the mean? Well, you start with that mean, the hypothesized population mean under the null hypothesis, mu naught, and you subtract off Z star a certain number of sigma sub X bars, standard deviations of X bar. And you get 11.92. So if you get a sample mean with a mean, if you get a sample mean of less than 11.92 ounces, then you're going to reject the null hypothesis.